Hey guys, Dan with Grit Overland. We are in a Grit Overland Link 148 all-wheel drive S2. That's a seat two, sleep two on our Ford Transit chassis um, here in the Pacific Northwest. It's a beautiful day. And I wanted to talk to you about some stuff that's very specific. It is one of the foundational pieces of our vans um, and why our customers and owners have an excellent, reliable experience in these vans. The whole end goal of our design process in every aspect is the van should fade into the background to your adventures. So today we're gonna talk about our reliable, durable, high quality 12 volt electrical system from under the hood all the way to the air conditioner and the inverter. So let's jump right in. So first of all, um, what you'll find in every single one of our vans that we build on the Ford Transit chassis it comes with dual alternators from the Ford factory. One of the major things in this industry that's happened with other RV companies is they would order the van with a single alternator, very common on a Sprinter because it's uh, more difficult to get with a dual alternator. But um, one of the things that we've seen in our industry is secondary alternators being installed to control the charging of an energy system which we totally understand why we want to have control over that. The problem is um, some of those alternators have had major issues. There's a lot of options out there that have been used in many different aspects um, in all kinds of class B RVs. So you've got like a Balmar and Nations and APS. You've got Lithionics has created their new alternator as well. There's a couple of other companies out there. Now, the biggest thing with those alternators is because they're not stock from the factory, they're not controlled by the brain of the computer, the computer brain in the van itself. They have to have a secondary controller. Now that secondary controller um, is complicated. So what ends up happening with it is you've got a primary alternator under the hood from the manufacturer of the van. You've got a secondary alternator from some manufacturer. You then have a battery and that you're pushing the energy into, you have to have an alternator controller to push, to control the field of that energy, whether it should move or it shouldn't move. And then a couple of other devices in there as well. So it gets really complex. The more complex an electrical system, the more possibility for failure points. Even some of those alternators, when the charging profile isn't right and the settings are not correct, have even had thermal events is what we're gonna call them, um, which can be a catastrophic thing for your RV or uh, for just the alternator, hopefully. What has grit done in order to change this? So the whole reason of putting in a secondary alternator is to charge more quickly. Why would we wanna charge more quick quickly? Well, we will wanna charge more quickly because we wanna run a high powered air conditioner that's going to actually cool our van down. Other than that, there's not a huge need to charge really quickly because the AC is the number one hog of energy in a camper van. Um, yes, you've got like your cooktops and your microwaves and other devices that you may be running, but really that air conditioner is the whole reason for a high powered energy system. Well, we've done some things that are funny because they're honestly kind of revolutionary, but it's going back to basics to create that system. So let's talk about the grid overland system and how it's a little bit different from those things that have become very um, common or popular in the industry. What we've done is we order every single one of our Ford Transits from Ford factory with dual stock alternators. So if you ever need service or you ever need to take your van into Ford for maintenance or repairs, when they open up that hood, it's all Ford. And all we're doing is tying into that system with a high quality, high stranded um, copper wire cable. I'm going to call it a cable. This is not a wire <laughs> um, with a really high quality tinned ring terminal. So I'm going to bring this up close to the camera so you can really see it here. So as you can see, the cable is not black, it's red, but it's housed in a protective coating. And then if you follow that cable down, we get to um, a section that's heat shrinked with a uh, special adhesive on the inside to protect that cable. And then also it goes into a really durable, variable conduit. So this is the kind of conduit that if you're building a commercial construction project, 
you would put wires in this and then bury it underneath a roadway or something. And we're taking this where the cable runs from the, the alternators underneath the van and then up into the energy compartment. It's put in this protective waterproof coating. Um, as you can see, this is a huge cable. Our energy system from Ford is actually able to push up to 200 amps off of that 12 volt system. And that's because we've designed the system right and we've run a huge cable back from it. And that is also not overtaxing the motor because both of those dual alternators from Ford are 250 amp alternators. So we're, work we're working within the specs that Ford has asked us to do it. And we're also doing it in 12 volts, which has been used in cars since the 1950s. So it's well tested, it's well used, and it's really reliable. Um, it's what almost every car currently is built on that voltage um, in its electrical system. The next piece of this cable that you can see here is our um, heat shroud. So where this cable runs uh, down through the engine compartment and underneath the van, anywhere it might be close to heat near exhaust or anything like that, um, of course, never coming in direct contact with that stuff, but we put a really, really high quality racing parts heat shroud on this thing so that it protects itself uh, all the way up to 3000 degree heat. So that's much more than a car will ever get to, but it's designed um, and built properly so that you never have an issue with it. And it's not something that's going to come back and become a problem. The next piece of this, so we've talked about the dual alternators, we've run through the wire. Now that cable, our electrical box is here in the passenger side underneath these storage cubbies. Um, one of the beautiful things of this 12 volt system that we've designed is it doesn't require a giant battery pack. And that is based on the air conditioner that we use. So we're putting a 320 amp hour lithionics heated battery pack in here. And then we're using a 12 volt Dometic RTX 2000 air conditioner. One of the beautiful things about this is most um, builders or RV manufacturers are not doing this. They're running from 51 volts or 12 volts up under the hood to a 51 volt or a 12 volt battery pack, but then they're going through their inverter and they're putting in a cheap 110 volt air conditioner on top of the van. This is a problem because the minute you pass through an inverter, those, those AC units, A, are um, using a lot more energy because it's um, a 110 volt air conditioner. And then the second thing is you're also losing energy just by going through the inverter. So it's about 18 to 20% of your energy that you pull is being lost just to invert from DC to, air, uh, to AC to run that air conditioner. So what we do is 12 volts under the hood for the alternators, 12 volt battery pack, 12 volt air conditioner. So we're saving you 18 to 20% just to run that air conditioner. The other thing that we do as a huge foundational piece is you can see in these walls, the bed does not sleep side to side. It sleeps north south, which allows us to put five inches of insulation in the walls on either side of the bed, which is actually about an R15 value, which is like a house. What that does is it actually allows this AC unit to keep this van cooled down, even in hot 90 plus degree temps, um, well down into the low 70s, 72, 71 comfort zone um, on a 12 volt air conditioner on eco mode. So on eco mode, this thing is pulling super low amperage. I believe it's about 15 amps is what it's pulling. And so your, your usage on this battery pack on a single charge, you can run this thing for 15 to 16 hours. And then if you need to recharge the house battery, you just turn the van on and let it idle for about 60 to 70 minutes. And it's fully recharged even while the air conditioner is still running. That is the beauty of running two stock alternators on the Ford through a big cable into a 12 volt battery. For you as the user, this is huge. One, you don't need as big of a battery pack. You have it's 320 amp hours or 4,000 watt hours. 
You don't need a battery pack that's 8,000, 13,000 watt hours. You just don't need it. Um, because of that 12 volt air conditioner and that good runtime. So that foundational piece is put in the right air conditioner, put in a bunch more insulation um, and create the right system. Now it not only has dropped the price and cost of the parts, which makes the van more affordable, it's also made it more reliable, more durable, and the longevity of the van is going to be significantly better. Uh, we call it a generational RV. And this electrical system is a big piece of that. You guys, we hope you've liked this video. We've talked about the electrical system here. There's a lot more quality stuff to learn about Great Overland Vans. Check us out. Check out our website. Look at our other videos. If you have questions, throw them in the comments. And we'd love to reply with another video discussing that stuff. The van should not be the adventure. It should fade into the background to the other stuff that you're out there to do, like fishing, hiking, trail running, whatever that may be. We want you to have a better experience and we're building a van that delivers that.